I don't understand what happened. to be able to do this without uh, someone there he, he needs direction yeah, this is jenny um i would just piggyback off jane so i have an 11 year old special needs son and um he actually goes to a special needs school on the kansas side and they're shut down for the whole year we are doing virtual learning um, we pick up supplies um, computers you know whatnot friday um, but he needs a lot of hand holding direction, redirection with um, staying on task and being able to complete things. Um, he can self direct a lot, but um, again, you know, yeah, they're saying this could potentially go on through June. Um, even one. 
So I will try and get those um, posted on the chat or I might send them to Emmett. Um, I work with Emmett, so he's pretty tech savvy. So I might have him or Sam do that, but I will get that to you guys. Very good. Thank you so much for that. I really appreciate you all sharing out these resources. Um, in terms of uh, resources beyond um, this opportunity, have you all been able to find kind of a central, and uh, Jenny kind of spoke to this a, a little bit before, just uh, would a centralized place and location for these resources be helpful for you? And if so, you know, what might that look like? I'd, I'd just be curious. Yeah, so not sure, um, sorry to chime in again, but not sure how everybody else feels about this, but um, you know, working under the homeschool laws for the state of Missouri, um, and obviously they do vary quite a bit from the state of Kansas, but um, Missouri is a little bit more lax and um, under homeschool laws specifically, I can tell you that um, it's very specific that a parent or a family member has to provide those services. So if for families that have PCA staff or um, self-directed supports um, for an individual with disabilities, they can't necessarily be the one overseeing the schooling. And so I think parents might be running into um, some difficulty there once things kind of normalize and go back um, so I'm personally worried about families like that, like, you know, situations like my son's in where, you know, once the, um, the parent goes back to work, what does that look like for the child and their education and how will there be some stability there? Um, that's my biggest concern. Thank you so much again, Jenny. Um, Anyone else uh, interested? Certainly some of our administrators uh, as well that uh, work uh, kind of directly with uh, K-12. Any um, insights and thoughts you'd like to share out with us? Hi, this is um, Teresa Bayshore from the Kaufman School. Um, and we are similar to, I think, Sarah shared out, we are just trying to do um, the best that we can to adapt and accommodate what our general education population is receiving um, and getting that to parents and um, just encouraging our special ed teachers, especially to be in as much communication with teacher or sorry, with kiddos and parents as they can um, and as much as parents want. Um, some parents are saying like, yes, keep calling. Yes, like give us everything. Some are saying like, hey, a little bit here and there, um, which is totally understandable because we're all kind of in uncharted waters right now. Um, but as far as for our fifth through eighth graders, that is um, accommodating packet, um, you know, a different level of the grade level work, um, getting that and then having online resources. I know they've found um, read alouds of different books that they're the class is reading and sending those YouTube links to them um, so that kids can have those read alouds available. And then for our high schoolers, um, we were able to get Chromebooks just to our high school population since that was a, um, we have a smaller, a much smaller high school. Um, and so special ed teachers, again, just trying to adapt and accommodate um, and provide the specialized instruction that um, the rest of the gen ed population is getting to, you know, cater to what kids need. Um, but really just taking it day by day has been our biggest thing and remembering that it's a day by day process. Um, that's kind of what we're running into is just remembering, hey, we're taking it one day at a time and being cognizant of that. Absolutely. Thank you so much for sharing, Teresa. I appreciate that. Um, any, anyone else? Administrators. Um, oh, hello. Hi, this oh. is Lori Friend, yeah. and I um, I'm I'm with several schools, but one of them that uh, we're talking about is De La Salle, uh, the high school. They have actually set up a virtual schedule. Now the the students do have the Chromebooks, and um, I don't know. I haven't looked at resources set up, but they've actually 
um, spectrum has allowed for every family to get the internet free for 60 days. So we've actually set up a virtual schedule and where the special ed teachers can come in and actually work with the students on video chats and they're using Google Classroom and some YouTube lessons. We just kind of kicked it off Monday. So that's, that I seems to be going pretty smooth. And as far as speech and language, uh, they're going to do FaceTime with the kiddos. Awesome. Thank you so much, Lori. Hello, everyone. Can, can, I, can you hear me? We got you. <laughs> okay. Um, my name is Jaquita Lahr. I'm the Assistant Director of Special Education for the Kansas City Public School District. So hello, good morning. Um, what we're doing, we just returned back from spring break as well. And so our teachers met, had a big PD um, yesterday in their buildings with their principals, talking about the next two weeks and what that looks like. By now, most of our students should have received an instructional package in the mail, a learning packet. And um, we have been planning um, this week about what after April 6th look like. Because our package, instructional package, is, is meant for like the first two weeks. And mm -hmm. then we're going to go specifically into um, virtual learning um, K-12, pre-K-12. Pre -K um, our special education teachers, case managers are reaching out today, all day, the rest of this week to our parents to give them Google numbers. Our district has provided every teacher with a Google number so they can call and text their parents um, frequently and they can access the teacher. The parents will have access to the teachers as well. So they're in the process right now of communicating um, every day with parents. Um, we have special programs in our district. We have our autism program. We have our essential skills program. And so those particular teachers in those programs are developing a modified um, instructional package for the students to do. And they will be working directly with those parents to help with any additional accommodations and modifications. Um, I have a team of instructional coordinators that are supporting teachers helping them to get their Google Classroom set up, helping them to modify and accommodate. Um, we're putting together as well as I heard someone speak about videos for parents and teachers about how to accommodate and modify packages um, and things like that. Um, I just put together a special education instructional support hotline number for our families. And so that information will be going out so that no matter what time of the day, they are able to call, text, leave messages with questions about the instructional support that they may need. That is a particular hotline that I am manning myself and my team and I will be responding um, to parents um, if very frequently and to make sure that their voice is heard. This is, um, a very trying time. We understand that our families are really struggling with just trying to make, make all of this make sense. Um, as a parent of special needs children, needs nephews and all that, I totally understand. I'm having constant conversations um, in the evenings with families and family members and friends on what do we do and how can we get through this together. So I see my responsibility is just reassuring our families that we are here with them and that we understand that this is different, but we are also putting in supports to make sure that they feel that they're not alone in this journey. So that's just some of the things that I'm working with um, our special education department with and um, the district. And today we'll be meeting, matter of fact, I might have to leave this meeting a little bit early um, because our district leadership is meeting to discuss how are we going to roll out devices. Our goal is for every student in our district to have some um, device to work on um, virtually. And our high school students, as I heard someone say, they have devices, but we have situations where some kids weren't able to go back to school and get devices out of their lockers and situations like that. So we're going to be addressing those things and coming up with a plan so that we can make sure by April 6th that every student in our district has an electronic device to work with. 
Oh my goodness. Thank you, Jahida. Thank you so much for sharing um, all of that great information. My hands are hurting from trying to oh. trying to get, get notes down as quickly uh, as oh, possible. I talk, I talk too fast sometimes. <laughs> no, that's, no, that's okay. That's okay. I'm a fast talker as well. And I know uh, Kim is taking notes and um, hopefully what we can do is um, for those people who were not able to join us or um, might be interested in accessing um, uh, some of the resources and information that was shared here as well, being able to share that out, I, I think as uh, uh, Kim's purse holder, um, we'll, I'll, I'll, I'll have to figure that out. But thank you so very much. Um, I know that uh, KCPS has a, a web page um, as well that's set up for their coronavirus response. Are many of the things that you listed, the hotline numbers, um, also listed there as well? Or is there another place that we can also go to be able to access that um, specific information uh, online? What's online right now is access to all of our instructional packages. That's okay. pre-K twelve. So you could go there, click the grade level, and you will see every resource that has been sent out to every family. And it's a lot. Um, we're talking 100 plus pages um, of of instructional materials that um, parents can work with their students on and will be able to connect with teachers and getting support on if you want, if we need to modify and say, let's focus on these particular um, lessons and things like that. But that's accessible to anyone right now. They can go out and see what every family has received. As far as the hotline, um, I just put that together yesterday. That has not been updated on any website or any information like that, but that will be pushed out through our case managers to parents and to our teachers. And so they will get that information probably first. And then I'll be working with our district about how we can get that posted. And, and if that is recommended to post it on the district site or in a different, or in a different site. I have a question. I have a question about that hotline, Jaquita. Is that going to be a um, is that going to be a person on that line? Is it going to be a voice message system? Like, what's the interaction going to look like there? I love that idea. Uh, since I am personally manning this hotline, I basically took my Google number and said, I don't want the Google number because I've, I've had my own personal Google number for nine years. So I have taken the Google number that the district has provided and I've just turned it into a hotline. Got so it. the message and the calls are coming directly to me. And okay. so I am able to answer that um, via my computer. Um, I'm able to call out and return calls via my computer or my cell phone if I choose to link it to my cell phone. Um, the text message, I'm able to respond back immediately um, when I receive those messages. And if it's a situation that I need to assign to an instructional leader or directly to that student, that parent's teacher, I'm able to shoot a message to Return the call, you know, within a certain time frame, and this is what the situation is about. So I'm personally manning that um, that hotline. Okay, awesome. I really love that idea, um, and I'd love to hear more about like kind of how that how that works um, and how people utilize it once it's up and running. Yeah, I'm really excited to get this information out to families. Um, so just cool. just got it started yesterday, so it's going to be probably a couple more days before we make it official and get everything posted for everyone to see. Cool. Thanks for sharing. You're welcome. Perfect. Thank you so very much for sharing that out. This, this is heartwarming, y'all. Like I'm just looking at all, all my fuzzies. Um, any anyone else? Uh, certainly, um, I, I'd be um, interested. I know there are some community orgs um, online uh, in this forum as well. Just in terms of how you're supporting virtual learning for. Um, uh, our special education landscape, how you're supporting families, you know, what other resources um, as a, a community focused organization that you might be providing or can direct people in the uh, in that direction as well. Hi, Samara, this is Jaque Wilkins. How are you doing and everyone hey. else? Hey, darling, how are you? <laughs> Good. So Tiara and I are on. Tiara is the Director of Education and Parent en Engagement. You know, we have our Parent Education Empowerment Center. And so during this time, Urban League will be offering free tutoring sessions to support children while they're at home during this time. And so some information will be coming out about that. So for everyone who's interested, just pay attention to our social media or log on to our 
um, website. We'll also be sending out information to our community partners. So I just want to throw that out there that we will be offering academic supports for parents and students at, during this time for free. That's fantastic, Jeffrey. Thank you so much for, for sharing that out. Thank you. This is uh, anyone else? From Children's Mercy. And this is all really exciting to hear all the things um, everybody is doing. Um, is there some way for us, for people to email their specific things to, or put it into a group? Um, message so that we we want to be able to push these things out to all of our families this information in some way but um i'm not able to take all this down uh but if if through an email we could get some of these wonderful resources of, um, listed that would be great because we're trying to figure out how to support the families and and just get information out would it be helpful to start maybe like an online um, resource sign-up sheet and um, everyone, it could be like a Google Doc and everyone could kind of implement their information and we could just, it could just kind of be a live sheet that's um, being updated um, on a regular basis? That would be great. Yeah. I I think that's super helpful. I think it, it just as a, a follow up to, to this call, I think um, one of the things that Kim and I, you know, because everybody was able to RSVP is to be able just, you know, certainly within this um, network to be able to push out some of those notes um, and, and some of uh, the links and, and information that was provided just as it's bundled, was bundled in this call. But uh, certainly thinking about beyond that, because, you know, not everybody is, you know, is, is available at, you know, at 10 a.m., you know, certainly um, being able to push that out to broader networks um, as well through a Google Doc or uh, a listserv. I know Kim has um, been working hard and kind of standing up a, a SPED um, listserv um, um, to be able to continue, you know, dialogues beyond this brave new world, but also um, uh, within it as well. Hi, Samara. It's Danielle Dispenza with Show Me Casey Schools. Oh, hey. Hey. Um, yes. Hi. So good to hear everyone's voices. Um, just also wanted to throw out there that Show Me Casey Schools um, has really shifted their um, focus and on our page, you will find um, learning at home um, opportunities. And so we have um, a page on our website um, that staff has been working on vetting websites and activities personally um, and, and uploading that so that in addition to what parents are receiving directly from their schools um, and educators, they can also find some of those resources. I know, Jenny, I think you maybe you had even shared some things that we um, have put up there and links to certain websites. Um, so definitely for any providers that kind of just need a one-stop shop list, um, that can be found on Show Me Casey Schools website. And from this meeting today, um, I would like to add some specifics um, that um, for students in special education. So Jenny, thanks again for sharing the specifics on some of the occupational therapy or YouTube videos. Um, we can add a list there so that parents looking for um, specific services for um, special education can also find them um, there as well. So thank you so much, everyone. That's perfect, Danielle. Thank you so much. Um, I was, I was going to call you out if you didn't say anything. It was like, uh, -uh. <laughs> I know y'all are over there cooking in the kitchen. That's that's perfect. Thank you so much. Yeah, no, and I think that, I mean, from a parent standpoint as well, um, I can um, attest um, to Casey, as a KCPS parent, you know, wearing two, two hats with Show Me Casey Schools. Um, we haven't gotten our packet in the mail yet. Um, I have a feeling it's gonna come either today or tomorrow. Um, we've been doing some, you know, supplemental with some online learning and, and just trying to do a lot of, um, you know, hands, hands on things as well with stuff that I have around the house, um, just because it's hard to constantly put the screen in front of the kids. So some of those resources that we're putting on Show Me Casey Schools website is for some of those um, 
hands-on things that maybe parents might already have in the household, like a deck of cards or something like that. Um, but it is, it is a lot. And so, I mean, I think I just want to add um, from a parent standpoint that we need to kind of level our expectations and a school day is a big long day. And I think that if we're just engaging um, our kiddos that we shouldn't hold ourselves to a super, super high standard of making sure that we're meeting all of these different um, high level expectations that our kids would otherwise have at physical school because um, we're, we've, we're wearing a lot of hats right now. So I think we can give ourselves a little bit of a break during this time. Absolutely. Absolutely. Be gentle with yourselves out there. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. So can you hear me? This is Marianne Hammond with Children's Mercy um, Education Coordinator for Autism. And I just wanted to put in three things that, number one, I think it sounds like all of us are going to get better at our websites. And I think everybody's really in the building phase at the moment. Mm -hmm. And Children's Mercy included that we're all working on trying to provide the right links and the right things for you all and uh, being really thoughtful about that, but realizing the immediacy of it as well. So I think by next week, we hopefully will have some things available also on our website. And specifically, um, I also, as a, as a parent of an adult that uh, <clears throat> is on the Kansas side, but in a group home, I just wanted to encourage everybody on both sides of the state line that if you have a case manager, to touch base with them because I did talk with my case manager yesterday, for example, in case I would have to bring my kiddo that's been in a group home who's 26, but been in a group home for about a year, if I would need to bring her home, what could happen? And what I'm finding is that at least in the state of Kansas, and I can't speak to Missouri, but I think she said it's been rather remarkable how things have loosed up and things have changed, for instance, <clears throat> if I brought her home, I could be a provider for her, which has never been available uh, or <laughs> rarely been available as mm -hmm. I can improve a lot of things. And so that's just a simple, doable idea right now. And that's all I have. Jenny, um, I just wanted to chime in real quick and kind of piggyback off what Mary had to say. Um, as a support coordinator on the Missouri side, um, DMH is lightening the restrictions a little bit. So um, some things they talked about in a conference on like Monday, no, that was yesterday, sorry, it was Friday, um, that they, anybody that has self-directed supports, um, there is a cap that the PCA can only work 40 hours a work week. That has been lifted. Um, a lot of the group homes on the Missouri side are also, um, they're readjusting, they're moving uh, individuals to a temporary home with another group home um, for staffing availability purposes. So they're consolidating homes um, to have less frequent in and outs with staff. Um, so instead of someone maybe having four people in their home, they might have seven right now. Um, and so that is taking place. Um, in addition, uh, like Mary had said, there are some um, exceptions that they are doing to allow if a, if a family member is um, wanting to be with their individual, they can be hired as staff um, by the provider and get paid, but they have to be hired by the provider in order for that to take place, but they can work a shift in order to be with their loved one and ensure that the safety and health um, of their loved one is being provided. Um, I don't know as far as the in-home piece. Um, again, that's where Missouri and Kansas, they, they do vary um, and they're a little different but I could definitely try and find that out um, and see if they're in any comparison to the information that Mary had shared. And I can let Kim know and she can send that out if, um, if, if anybody needs that information. But I would definitely agree, definitely use your caseworker.
Hi, this is Tierra, the um, Director of Education and Family Engagement at the Urban League. Um, I know we've talked a lot about academic services and things like that, um, but um, are there any like support groups or in things that we'll be able to refer our, our parents to? Because I know, um, you know, it's different having your kid at home all the time and um, just, I would like to be able to provide our mental mental health resources for for them not just their students but for them that was a great question and i haven't heard anything um about any group uh support groups i definitely think that that is something that um a lot of us in this group would probably facilitated by anybody that feels comfortable doing that. Um, but I will see from a mental health standpoint, um, I think that maybe we could reach out to even um, some of the catchment areas like Rediscover, Comprehensive, Swope, and see if anybody like that has anything that they might have heard of right now. Um, Okay, it looks like we have about 10 more minutes. Um, and are you all hearing me okay? I know my internet is very wonky today for some reason. Not hearing me? Uh, I'll use chat. Kim, it might be the room that you're in. Um, okay, it's kind of- Still very warbly. Kim, it might be the room that you're in. Like when I'm upstairs, I have to move downstairs for mine to work better. Okay, let's see. Well, it's kind of the cleanest room in the house. <laughs> let's see. I'm so I didn't know. Am I, can you under, hear anything I'm saying now? If not, I'll just kind of have to use chat. Oh, goodness. No, nothing. Okay, sorry. Okay. Kim, maybe try to turn off your video and just go audio. Okay. Okay. Um, can you hear me better this way? This is so wild. Uh, okay. everyone really helpful to hear kind of how everybody's doing and that we're all in this together figuring it out thanks everybody thank you kim thank you all <laughs>